Greetings, salutations to Safe to Surf International and first time viewers. Welcome to this midday power surge. I'm your host, Andrew Henriquez. We're streaming live here on YouTube and on other platforms. The links are actually in the description and later on in the pinned comment. We have a lot to cover today. Something is trending that I believe we should be paying attention to this issue, this crisis, because very, very soon, the predicted and prophesied enslavement will come to full fruition. Let's get right into this. I'm going to actually poll, post, post a poll, a poll question twice in this presentation. And I'm going to look for a specific response. So here is uh, the poll question before we get right into it. And this poll question is based on a trending topic. It has garnered several thousands, yea, millions of views on social media. It has created a firestorm on social media because both the left and the right have now picked up the proverbial arms to defend their side of this controversy. Here is the poll question. Human rights come from which of the following? You have four options. Option A, God. Option B, the federal government. Option C, both A and B. And option D, distraction from the real issue. I'm gonna give you a few minutes to contemplate this actual question. Put the answer, not in the comment section, but under the poll question. In a few moments, I'm going to ask for the results. Then later on, I'm going to repost this poll question, and then I'm going to see what the response is going to be. What has uh, brought this catalyst to a head? Headline says, uh, do human rights come from Caesar or government, from God or from the government? And later on, I'm going to share with you this actual question and issue took place at the closing scene of Christ's earthly ministry. I'm going to confirm that from the Bible. Let's move on. Here is a, a reporter, Heidi Prisbilla. She actually says, you're not a Christian if you believe that your rights come from God. You are a Christian nationalist. And then she qualified that Christian nationalists are not Christians. Here it is. The one thing that unites all of them, because there's many different groups orbiting Trump, but the thing that unites them as Christian nationalists, not Christians, by the way, because Christian nationalists is very different, mm -hmm. is that they believe that our rights as Americans, as all human beings, don't come from any earthly authority. They don't come from Congress. They don't come from the Supreme Court. They come from God. I really want to reason with you today. Come, let us reason together, say the Lord, in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 and verse 19. If this was simply one person's opinion, why talk about it? It would not create such a firestorm. But what if I were to share with you that this ideology, this sentiment is actually a movement? then you will realize how important it is for all of us to consider this controversy. Watch carefully, my friends. This is an atheistic movement on foot. And of course, she represents the left, the Democrats, the quote-unquote secularists. This movement is actually from the globalists, the radicals. It is akin to communist socialists, and of course, the puppet master brings you to the Jesuits. Watch carefully. Do you remember the words of President Joe Biden? As if he was stumbling over the words that constitute the Declaration of Independence? Some people said, oh, that was simply senility settling in. He's getting old. 
or was it really intentional? The issue is over the words of the Declaration of Independence, which says, all the way back in 1776, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish that said government and to institute a new government. Is there a new government on foot? Are they planning to alter and abolish? Both from the left and from the right, this movement is on foot. And remember, we are told in the book, Great Controversy, page 588, and volume 5, page 451, that they will repudiate every principle of the U.S. Constitution and lead us into popery enslavement. Here is President Biden. Was this simply just dementia setting in, or was it intentional? We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, you know the, you know the thing. You know what thing? You know what thing? Was this intentional? We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, you know the, you know the thing. Mm, okay. Friends, at this point, I'm going to share with you, it's a movement. Here is the former president, Barack Obama. Democrat, right? From the left. This is a part of his farewell address. He states, the U.S. Constitution is just a piece of parchment. It has no power. We give it power. Just a piece of parchment? Hold on. We, what would he say of the Bible? Is the Bible simply a piece of parchment? Of course we know. The literal, tangible Bible leaves have no power. But the words are powerful because the words are inspired by God. The principles come from God, Barack Obama. Our Constitution is a remarkable, beautiful gift. Double speak. But it's really just a piece of parchment. It has no power on its own. Hmm. So what would he say of the Bible? Is this a movement? Look at the clip too. He went on to state, it's simply a piece of parchment. We give it power and we can defend the rights of people or not defend the rights of people. We can uphold the rule of law or we can choose not to uphold the rule of law. Here it is. Same speech. So, we the people give it power. We the people give it meaning. Applause. With our participation and with the choices that we make and the alliances that we forge. Whether or not we stand up for our freedoms, whether or not we respect and enforce the rule of law. Did you see that? That's up to us. Did you hear that? And he went on to state in another statement that he was giving, he says, watch carefully, the Constitution is simply a document of negative liberties. What? Negative liberties. He says it's time for America to break free from this U.S. Constitution. And he made that statement in the context of supporting and promoting the redistribution of wealth. In other words, you have no right to private property. Is privacy a God-given right? Here he is. Clip one of the audio. But the Supreme Court never ventured into the issues of redistribution of wealth uh, and sort of more basic issues of political and, and, and uh, economic justice in the society. 
And uh, to that extent, as radical as I think people tried to characterize the Warren Court, uh, it wasn't that radical. It, it didn't break free from the essential constraints that were placed uh, uh, by the Founding Fathers in the Constitution, at least as it's been interpreted, and Warren Court interpreted it in the same way, that, that generally the Constitution is a charter of negative liberties, says what the... Hmm? You see? Break free from it. He went on to state that the federal government, that the U.S. Constitution states, the federal government can't do. But it doesn't state what the federal government can do. That's what he meant by negative liberties. Here he is. Speak for yourself. That, that generally the Constitution is a charter of negative liberties, says what the states can't do to you, says what the federal government can't do to you, but it doesn't say what the federal government or the state government must do on your behalf. No, uh, and that no, no, hasn't no, no, no. shifted in one of the, uh, I think, uh, the tragedies of the civil rights movement was um, because the civil rights movement became so court focused. Uh, I think that there was a tendency to lose track of the political and community organizing and, and activities on the ground Listen. that are able to put together the actual coalitions of power through which you bring about redistributive uh, change. Uh, and uh, in some ways, we still suffer from that. Full circle. The redistribution of wealth. He states, the U.S. Constitution states what the federal government can't do to the people, but it does not state what the federal government can do on behalf of the people. What a subtle use of words has to be a politician. My friends, this is popery. Look at your screen. What does the Roman Catholic Jesuit Pope and the Popes of Rome have said? They clearly state the right to private property as absolute and untouchable does not exist. We have power over your wealth. Redistribution of wealth, it's right there, blue words. The universal destination of goods, Nancy Pelosi said the very same thing. And the Popes of Rome state, the principles of freedom enshrined in the U.S. Constitution are the most pestilential era. Here is Nancy Pelosi. There it is right there. What is she promoting? The universal distribution of goods. You have no right to privacy and your rights. Where injustices abound and growing numbers of people are deprived of basic human rights. You know what? And the transcript of her statement is right there on the screen. And she's quoting from Laudato Si, a direct quote. So stop right there. So whose principles permeate the left? Whose principles permeate the Democrats? Roman Catholicism. Pass this. The popes go on to say the government, federal government, can take away your property. Can take away your goods, it's right there. I don't make things up. Second paragraph, I don't make things up. So whose policies control the left? All right, notice here, friends, the common good has become global. It's globalism, Jesuitism, collectivism, common good, give up your individual rights. Stop it right there. So the reporter, Heidi Prisbola, is actually launching a tirade against the right, the conservatives, so-called Christian nationalists, that they want to append the U.S. Constitution, but the party she promotes does the same. If it looks like a duck, if it swims like a duck, quacks like a duck, then what, friends? It is a duck. Here she is. By the way, let me get the results here, preacher. So what is the result from the poll? Human rights come from which of the following? And we have 66% chose. Option A, it comes from God. Well, based on what we have covered so far, that answer is correct. But remember, I'm going to repost that poll later on. And then let me see what the response is going to be. 
This is Heidi Prisbala. She goes on to state that this idea coming from the right, conservatives, Republicans, churchmen, evangelicals, the Christian nationalists, she says their policies are rooted in natural law from the Roman Catholic Church. Heidi Prisbala, your party also has been infected with Roman Catholicism. Here she is. Same statement. Watch. Christians, by the way, because Christian nationalists is very different, mm -hmm. is that they believe that our rights as Americans, as all human beings, don't come from any earthly authority. They don't come from Congress. They don't come from the Supreme Court. They come from God. Listen. The problem with that is that they are determining man men, mm -hmm. it is yeah, men, yeah. are determining what God is telling them. And in the past, that so-called natural law is, you know, it's a pillar of Catholicism, for, oh. Catholicism, for instance, it's been used for good in social justice campaigns. Right. Martin Luther King evoked it in talking about Stop. civil rights. But now you have an extremist element of conservative Christians who say that this applies what? specifically to issues including abortion, gay marriage, and it's going much further than so that. So she's calling the right extremist group because their policies are rooted in Roman Catholic natural law, common good, socialism. Heidi Prisbala, the party you promote is also infected with socialism. You see my point, friends? So who is going to enlighten these individuals? I hope Heidi Prisbala gets a hold of this presentation and she prayerfully examines the content, the forensic evidences. Here is a response from Bishop Robert Barron. He's responding to Heidi Prisbala's statement. Here he is, clip one. I want to share with you some reflections on um, a clip I saw. I think it came out last night. Heidi Prisbala from uh, Politico was on MSNBC. It was one of the most disturbing and frankly dangerous things I've ever seen in a political conversation. She's going after what she calls Christian nationalism. But what she said was, there are these Christian nationalists out there who are claiming that our rights don't come from any, you know, human authority. They come from God. And she All right. And he goes on to state, if we side with the left, if we believe our rights come from the government, then the federal government can easily strip away those rights. Clip two. And may I say, everybody, it is exceptionally dangerous when we forget the principle that our rights come from God and not from a government. Because the basic problem is, if they come from the government or Congress or the Supreme Court, they can be taken away by those same people. This is opening the door to totalitarianism. <laughs> This is not some kind of religious nationalism or what? sectarianism. Hold on. So this is a Roman Catholic, uh, Baron Robert Barron, saying that on the left, they are promoting totalitarianism. I'm going to share with you after this third clip. The right is also promoting totalitarianism. It's simply under a different guise. Just as one party is dressed in red, the other party is dressed in blue. One part, you get the point, friends? Write down these three scriptures. Deuteronomy 17 and verse 20. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 7. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 27. Jesus says, the Lord says, we should not sway and join with the left nor with the right. Third clip. He says, in their enthusiasm, the left now. Their aggressiveness to counteract the right. They're pushing totalitarianism, globalism, to append the U.S. Constitution. I'm going to share with you the right will do the same thing. Watch this. So can I just say that in their enthusiasm, yes. I suppose, you know, to go against so-called Christian nationalism, they're actually going against the foundations of our democracy. And it's a further evidence of this extreme hostility of the left now toward religion. No Friends, at this time, I'm going to post the poll 
one more time. All right? I'm going to post the poll one more time. Okay? And it simply says, watch carefully. Our human rights come from which of the following? A, it comes from God. B, it comes from the federal government. C, both A and B. D, distraction from the real issue. Now, let that poll stay here until I close this presentation. I want to see what the response is going to be next. Now, friends, in this segment, I'm going to share with you the right, the conservatives, the so-called evangelicals, the, 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 the MAGA movement, Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, they have their version of appending our rights enshrined in the U.S. Constitution while they say they are promoting the liberties in the U.S. Constitution. Watch this. This is Renaissance, Renaissance man on YouTube. He was present at CPAC and he did a poll interview with a few persons. Listen to their response. To what question? Where do our rights come from? Here he is. So, I come from God himself. Amen. God himself. Amen. Our God, the Constitution. From God, so then the government should be under God. From God. Not from God. Why do they come from God? Because that's where everything started, and that's the foundation of life. Um, I would say probably from God. I believe it's a mixture. Okay. I do. You know, I think that, you know, you have to keep God as a part of what this nation is here for. From God, it's a no-brainer. Not from the government. I think it's from coming from us as an individual person. Individual person. Yes. Okay. We don't want the government to control us. Okay. We want gotcha. the, the, the government to be limited. God. God. I would say the Constitution, eh? God. Where do our rights come from? From God. government? God. <laughs> God. Listen, where was he? At CPAC. I will define CPAC shortly. Over and over again, their responses were, one sentence, we don't want the government to take away our rights. They come from God. Watch this. CPAC. CPAC. CPAC is actually connected to the conservatives, the GOP, Republicans. And look at their foundation statement. They want to preserve and protect the values of life, liberty, and property for every American. Now, in the chat, Vicky Vasquez writes, that is why our Lord told us not to get involved into politics. Thank you for your comment. Patricia Vasquez writes, this is not politics. No, it is a politics. Pope politics. Powerful play on words right there. Watch this right here. Friend. This is Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, the so-called MAGA movement, the GOP, the evangelical movement, the conservatives. Rep what are they promoting? Policies to force Americans against their liberty of conscience. Watch this now. Buckle your seatbelts, friends. This is Mike Johnson saying, God told him he's going to be Moses. All right. He had a particular meeting with the members of Congress. And the response from the members of Congress was that instead of Republicans, Republicans of Congress, instead of his speech being a political speech, it was actually a religious one, a sermon. That was February 23rd, 2024. Watch carefully. And Mike Johnson went on to say that citizens often look to the government for leadership when their spiritual needs are not being met. Yes. Use the government to enhance people's spirituality. And the issue here for Mike, for Mike Johnson is that there is moral declension. Yes. Moral declension in America. Church attendance is declining. 
So what is the solution, Mike Johnson? It's right there. He contended, when one doesn't have God in their life, the government or the state should become their guide. What? Do you not see it, friends? Let's continue. And we're told in the book, Great Controversy, page 587, the mark of the beast, Sunday enforcement by law with persecution for dissenters will be enforced to combat moral declension in America. Are these things on foot? Red words, Mike Johnson, the MAGA movement, the Republicans, those who promote Trump, so-called evangelicals, the conservatives, the right wing, what do they promote? They're telling us red words on the screen. They want Congress to force people back to church. But what about those who don't choose to go to church? Or what about those who choose not to go to church on their particular day, Sunday? What's going to happen? You see my point? Where do our rights come from? Let's continue. There it is. And Mike Johnson belonged to Alliance Defense Fund, Alliance Defending Freedom, which is connected to Project 2025. And what is their plan to control the next Republican administration, November 2024? Look at the red words. What is their object objective? The government to push people back to church. The government using Congress to rest on a particular day. What day are they going to promote? Sunday. And what is their issue? Church attendance is declining in America. Watch carefully. We should be debating a bill requiring every American to attend a church of their choice on Sunday. On Sunday. Let's move on. Can we see what's coming? Let's move on to what Trump said recently. All right. Here is Trump. He says to release broadcasters, he would defend Christianity against the perceived threat from the left. It sounds good. So let us now support the right. Is that what we are to do? Both sides are on foot to append the principles of freedom in the U.S. Constitution. Watch the headline. What does Trump say in Nashville, February 23rd, 2024? It's time to bring, push people back to church. It's right there, friends. Push people back to church. We want religion back into the public square. And is bite back on that. But for four years, we went through uh, a great period. You were able to speak. And we're going to make that on a permanent basis. You're going to be able to do it because you're the people we want to hear from, the pastors and the ministers and the rabbis. The people in this room are the people we want to hear from, and they have to have a political voice. You know, if you think about it, you have men, you have women, and you have religion. If you look at it, you have more than the men, you have more than the women. You have such power, but you really, you weren't allowed to use that power and you're now allowed to use it. I get in there, you're going to be using that power at a level that you've never used it before. It's going to bring back the churchgoer. I mean, you have to see. I don't like the charts when I see charts where they're going in the wrong direction. We don't like that. We're going to bring it back. And I really believe it's the biggest thing missing from this country. Yes. It's the biggest thing missing. We have to bring back our religion. We have to bring back Christianity in this country. So what about the U.S. Constitution? Is it making sense? I covered this this past Sabbath in the evening session, and the video has been posted on our platform. He mentioned church attendance declining. We must push people back to church. Amen buildings. But no one will be touching the cross of Christ under the Trump administration. I swear to you that will not. It's a marriage taking place, my friends. Church and state are uniting. He can be bought, he can be sold. Quid pro quo. And we will protect God in our public square, which they don't want us to do. I will never allow the big media or left-wing pressure groups 
to silence you, censor you, discriminate against you, or in any way tell you I agree with that. what you have to say. They want you to say what they want you, what they want. Not agree with Trump. I agree with the comment in the comment section from Jomana who writes, quoting Trump, you'll be able to use that power at a level you never used it before, end quote. And then she writes, the dark ages, which means... 538 to 1798, the dark ages will be repeated. This is dark speech. It's coming, friends. David Simon writes, the final ultimatum of any false religion is force. The left is forcing us against our conscience. And the right continue. And we will protect God in our public square. What does that mean? Compare these two statements, one from JFK and one from Ryan, Paul Ryan, uh, not Paul Ryan, <laughs> Rick Santorum. Faith in the public square means uniting church and state. That's what it means. Uniting church and state. Notice whose policy is this? Not only evangelicals in America, the right, the conservatives, it is the principle of the Jesuit Pope. Both wings of the same fowl have been infected by Pope and Jesuitism. I won't even play Mike Johnson because he's promoting religion in the public square. Of course, even though there is a dangerous trend today to discourage the or display or the depiction or exercise of our faith in, in the public square. Certainly All right, enough of that. So we know what is coming. What happens when church and state unite? Look at this. Reverend Eddie Hyatt, author of Pilgrims and Patriots. Church and state was merged together, and the church used the power of the state to enforce its doctrines and practices. He says certain governments used deadly force against dissenters who wanted to worship in their own way. Those people were persecuted, uh, burned at the stake. Some had their tongues cut out. The founders did not want that kind of Christianity. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up in this way. The other talking points can be found in the video I did this past Sabbath. It's okay. They did it. I signed an executive order. Okay, yes. The other talking points are there in the video I covered this past Sabbath. Oh, you know that? Four years we totally transformed. Okay, yes. Take a look at the, that video this past Sabbath. We will restore faith and family to the center of American life. All right. Friends, let me at this point, by the way, he mentioned when he gets into office, I'm not sure how he knows that, he says there's coming a great revival. We will restore faith and family to the center of American life and we will restore power to the people. Ladies and gentlemen, with your help and God's grace, the great revival of America begins on November 5th, 2024. Just as we're told in Great Controversy, page 464, the false revival, the counterfeit revival, precedes the genuine revival. How am I going to land this plane? Let's get the poll results. Let us get the poll results, friends. Now I'm going to ask the question one more time. All right. Are our human rights come from which of the following? All right. Does it come from A? Give it to me. All right. Enough of that. A, God. B, the federal government. C, A and B. Or D, distraction from the real issue. What is the response now? End the poll, preacher. Let's get the response, the results. Beloved, 67% chose A. Based on what I covered, that answer is incorrect right now. The answer is D. And 10% showed a distraction from the real issue. Let me confirm that. Beloved, do you remember I said to you, when Christ said, give me a penny, when they asked, should we give tribute to Caesar or no? And Jesus said, give me a penny. 
Show me a penny. Whose image is on that penny? And they, I'm closing. And they said, Caesar, the government. Jesus said, render unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's and render unto God the things which are God's. In whose image were we created in? The image of God. Government should not force a conscience. Government can force people to go back to church and to become religious. Church and state are separate, Caesar and God. Listen attentively. In Luke 20 is where you find that statement. Verse 22 through verse 25. Watch now. Do you know how Luke 20 begins? In verse 1 through verse 8, here is a question to Christ. Who gave you the authority to do what you're doing? Here is Christ's response. I'll ask you a question. If you answer, I'll give you the answer you're asking for. Then Christ said, John the Baptist, listen attentively, friends. Was he from God or was he from man? Watch the point. And the leaders of the Jewish church said, if we say from men, everybody's going to stone us because everybody knows John was sent from God. If we answer and say, oh no, John came from God, then Christ is going to say, why did you not believe him? Accept what he was teaching. Flip it now for the application. What's the controversy? From whom and from what do our rights come from? You see my point? Is it from the government or from God? That's not the real issue. Because those who believe it comes from God, Republicans, the right, the question is, what are they planning to do? To force your conscience. Go back to church. You see my point? So the issue is those on the right, though they say your rights come from God, they're about to strip away those rights, force you to become moral and religious to the left. The left is saying, wait, wait a minute, government, it comes from government as if they are championing our rights. The left are also removing our liberties. You saw what happened in the pandemic, the COVID-19, both left and right trampled upon our rights. That's why the answer to the poll in this context, it's a distraction from the real issue. Let me close by saying this. Was Christ sent from God? In Matthew 21, when Christ gave the parable, Jesus said, the leader said, here is the heir to the throne. Let's kill him. They knew Jesus came from God. But what happened? Those who believe he came from God crucified him. That's the nail in their coffin. That's the nail in a sure place. So those who are saying, our oh, rights come from God, they're about to take away said rights. What about John the Baptist? He came from God, but they beheaded John the Baptist. Revelation 13, 11 through verse 17, America is about to speak as a dragon. What point stood out to you? Leave that point in the comment section. I'll meet you below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and share this video so others may be enlightened. God bless. And remember, the Lord is soon to come. And the protest continues.